The exterior of a car defines its beauty while the interior tells what the car can do for us. We hardly ever pay attention to the engine, which is a car's most crucial component. The engine is the first thing on the minds of car enthusiasts, but for the common man, it is probably the last. Don't just assume that power and mileage numbers are the only information that matters. Knowing a little bit more about your car's engine can help you make the best choice for your needs and minimize servicing costs. Let's start with what is engine. Prior to hybrid and electric powered vehicle engines, a car's engine could easily be described as a machine that facilitates the internal combustion of energy-producing liquids like diesel and petrol. However, since the introduction of hybrid and electric cars, explaining how a modern car engine works requires a bit more information and know-how. Modern car engines are complicated and specifically designed to meet various customers' needs. A few people prefer more power, while others focus only on fuel efficiency. To satisfy the need of every customer, car manufacturers have devised several different car engine types over the past few decades. Today, we are going to explain each type of car engine out there to increase your knowledge about engines. The major distinction between engines is internal combustion engine and external combustion engine. So let's start with internal combustion engine. An internal combustion engine is a type of heat engine where the combustion of fuel takes place inside the chamber. When the fuel burns inside the engine, it causes the temperature and pressure to increase. This high pressure produced by combustion is then applied directly to power pistons, rotors, or a nozzle. It's the force that moves your car over a distance, transforming chemical energy into useful mechanical energy. These engines are generally used in automobile industries to power cars. An internal combustion engine can be categorized on many bases, for instance, type of ignition, number of strokes, design, and so on. To understand the steps of how a four-stroke internal combustion engine works, the four strokes are used, intake, compression, power, exhaust. In intake stroke, the piston starts the process by descending and drawing air into the cylinder via intake valves. Then, fuel is delivered into a cylinder that houses the piston. In compression stroke, the intake valves close allowing the piston to move back up, thereby compressing the air and fuel within the cylinder. In power stroke, a spark plug ignites the compressed fuel air mixture to create a small explosion. The process is repeated continuously when the engine is running. In exhaust stroke, the waste fumes produced by the explosion in each cylinder are expelled through the vehicle's exhaust system. Now let's understand what is external combustion engine. As the name suggests that in an external combustion engine combustion of fuel takes place outside the engine. Here the extra heat is utilized to produce low pressure steam which is used in the turbine to produce electricity. Here the fuel is burned outside the engine so we can also use solid fuel. External combustion engines are not used in cars. Types of based on the number of strokes. First is two-stroke engine. In a two-stroke engine, a piston completes a power cycle with two strokes, one up and one down inside the cylinder to complete one crankshaft revolution during a single fuel burn. In this type of engine, the end of the combustion stroke and the beginning of the compression stroke happen simultaneously, which means the intake and exhaust functions occur at the same time. Four-stroke engine A four-stroke engine is an internal combustion engine variant in which the piston completes four strokes while turning a crankshaft. The piston moves two times up and down inside the cylinder and completes two crankshaft revolutions. This type of engine offers high mileage compared to two-stroke engines. Six-stroke engine Although the six-stroke internal combustion engine is in its development phase, it's already creating a lot of buzz in the motor industry. The six-stroke engine has several dedicated advantages over traditional motors and may result in increased fuel efficiency, reduced mechanical complexity, and reduced emissions. Types of based on design of engine Reciprocating engine The main component of a reciprocating engine is a piston, which is used to convert pressure into a rotating motion. There may be one or more pistons in an engine, each of them is located inside a cylinder. 
When pressurized gas is injected and heated inside the cylinder, the piston initiate reciprocating or to and fro motion. Second is Wankel engine. The Wankel engine is also known as a rotor engine because it uses an eccentric rotary system to convert pressure into rotating motion. It is simpler, smoother, and much more compact compared to its more popular competitor, the reciprocating or piston engine. Since Wankel engines produce more power pulses per revolution compared to two-stroke and four-stroke engines, they are generally used in racing cars. Based on the ignition method. Compression ignition engine. In a compression ignition engine, the combustion of fuel in the chamber is triggered by the high temperatures achieved by gas or air due to adiabatic compression. Diesel engines are a perfect example of a compression ignition engine since it works only by compressing the air. Spark ignition engine. All petrol engines are based on spark ignition, where a spark plug ignites the combustion of the air-fuel mixture. Even though spark ignition engines are commonly referred to as petrol engines, they can also run on autogas, methanol, bioethanol, compressed natural gas, hydrogen, and nitromethane. Electric motor. Unlike traditional ICE-powered cars, electric cars get power from their pre-installed rechargeable batteries. Electric motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. They are more effective than traditional ICE in converting stored energy. They also have higher onboard efficiency than diesel engines. Most electric cars either use lithium-ion or lead-acid batteries. HCCI The HCCI technology combines the characteristics of conventional gasoline engines and diesel engines to produce a hybrid solution. Unlike traditional spark ignition gasoline engines or compression ignition diesel engines, HCCI engines rely on a precise mixture of fuel and air that is compressed until it spontaneously combusts, without the need for a spark or fuel injection. This combustion process results in high fuel efficiency and lower emissions compared to traditional engines, making HCCI engines a promising technology for the future of transportation. Engine types based on the number of cylinders. Single-cylinder engine Single-cylinder engines have only one cylinder connected to the crankshaft. They are compact, lightweight, and have a better weight-to-power ratio. Single-cylinder engines are used in motorcycles, motor scooters, dirt bikes, and go-karts. Multiple-cylinder engine This engine has multiple cylinders instead of one. It can be either a two-stroke or four-stroke engine either diesel or spark ignition. It is capable of achieving higher revolutions per minute and has a superior capability to neutralize imbalances. Now look at the engine types according to the arrangement of the cylinder. Inline engine. In inline engines, cylinders are arranged in a straight line, one behind the other, along with the length of the crankshaft. Inline-4 is the most popular in the automotive industry as it is compact, fuel-efficient, and gives a higher power-to-weight ratio than flat-6 or 8 engines. V-Engine The cylinders and pistons in a V-type engine are aligned in two separate planes in such a way that they appear to be in a V shape when viewed from the top. The unique shape of this engine substantially reduces the overall engine weight and length compared to inline engines. W-Engine W engines are a type of internal combustion engine that features a unique configuration in which the cylinders are arranged in a W a shape. This design allows for a high cylinder count and compact packaging, making W engines popular in high performance and luxury vehicles. The W engine design is often used in cars that require high levels of power and torque, such as sports cars, supercars, and high-end sedans. Opposed Piston Opposed Cylinder Engine An opposed piston opposed cylinder engine consists of two cylinders with a piston at both ends. There is no cylinder head and, thus, no valves. Compared to conventional engines, the opposed cylinder opposed piston engine has very low bearing loads, meaning there will be less friction. This type of engine is also relatively compact and lightweight, making it suitable for use in a range of applications including automobiles, aircraft, and marine vessels. Radial engine 
In radial engine, the cylinders stick out from a central crankcase like spokes on a wheel. It is referred to as a A-star engine because it resembles a stylized star when viewed from the front. In general, radial engines are more reliable. This is because it has a shorter crankshaft, a more straightforward construction, and produces less vibration. Before the gas turbine engine becomes the dominant option, it is often used for aircraft engines. Engine types based on valve arrangements. I-head engine. In I-head or overhead valve engine, the valves are located in the cylinder head. Inline engines usually have the valves in a single row. V8 engines may have the valves in a single row or in a double row in each bank. L-head engine. In an L-head arrangement, the inlet and exhaust valves are located side by side and operated by a single camshaft. The combustion chamber and cylinder from an inverted L. F-head engine. This engine combines L-head and I-head engines, in which one valve, usually the inlet valve, is in the head, and the exhaust valve is in the cylinder block. Both sets are driven from the same camshaft. T-head engine. The T-head engine has the inlet valves on one side and the exhaust valves on the other side of the cylinder. Thus, two camshafts are required to operate them. Engine types base type of cooling. Air-cooled engines. Air-cooled engines are used in motorcycles and scooters. In air-cooled engines, the cylinder barrels are usually separate and are equipped with metal fins which give a large radiating surface to increase the rate of cooling. Many air-cooled engines have metal shrouds that direct the airflow around the cylinders for improved cooling. Since these engines do not use water, the problem of cold weather maintenance is eliminated. Water-cooled engines. These types of engines are used in buses, trucks, cars, and other four-wheeled, heavy-duty motor vehicles. These engines use water, with an antifreeze compound added to serve as the cooling medium. The water is calculated through water jackets around each of the combustion chambers, cylinders, valve seats, and valve stems. After passing through the engine jackets in the cylinder block and cylinder head, the water is passed through the radiator, where it is cooled by air drawn through the radiator. Engine types according to air intake process. Naturally aspirated. The naturally aspirated engine is a type of internal combustion engine in which air intake depends solely on atmospheric pressure and does not rely on forced induction through a turbocharger or a supercharger. Many sports cars specifically use naturally aspirated engines to avoid turbo lag. Supercharged and turbocharged engines have some fundamental differences. A supercharger uses a crankshaft to drive energy and produce power rather than an exhaust stream, like in turbochargers. Superchargers are connected directly to the engine via a belt, and thus they can achieve speeds up to 50,000 RPM. In contrast, turbochargers are not directly connected to the engine and can go up to 15,000 RPM. Moreover, turbochargers are equipped with smog-altering instruments that lower carbon emissions, so they are more eco-friendly than superchargers. With this brief introduction to engines, you should find understanding your car rather easy. If I missed something, then let me know in the comments. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and make sure to subscribe our channel.